So you found a raw comic that you want to buy online, whether it be on eBay or wherever, and you don't want to overpay for it. You want to kind of figure out how to ballpark the grade, get an approximation so you can kind of just know what you should be paying on it. How do you do this? People don't post very good pictures that often. So first of all, if you see a couple blurry photos and that's it, there's probably a reason those photos are blurry in the first place. So just move on to the next listing. Unless you're just looking for a reader's copy, move on. Make sure they've got at least two really good pictures, high resolution, so you can kind of pan in a little bit. So what I'll do is we'll just go through a few comics. I'll just pick some on, at random on eBay and I'll show you a good rule of thumb way of figuring out an approximation or getting a good idea of a relative grade on a comic and then how to figure out a price once you do kind of have a ballpark on the grade. So let's get started. So let's say we're looking for a mid high to high grade copy of Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number eight. We don't want to pay slabbed prices we want to pay raw prices and potentially we'll buy more than one copy and maybe we'll slab it and sell it. Now I did a video on how to choose which comics to submit to CGC and I used this spreadsheet I have here on the right side of your screen. I'll put a link above and in the description below on how to find that video so you can do that. What this video is more about is how to ballpark grades online on eBay we'll do as an example on choosing which ones to buy that have the best potential for profit and avoiding comics that have maybe some flaws that we just want to stay away from, right? So let's say we're looking for a copy of Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number eight. And so what we want to do is just basically gain an idea of, of what are we looking to pay for this book? So we can see that a high grade copy, you know, 9.0 goes for 210 as a slabbed copy all the way up to, you know, 800 bucks for a 9.8. We know we could get 210 for a 9.0 as a slabbed sale, right? So what do we want to pay? Well, we got to figure we're going to have some fees involved, like just figure something like 40 bucks. So right now to break even, we know we need to get a raw copy for something like 170 bucks. But in order to make a profit, we probably want to find one for at least 50 bucks less than that. So Whenever I'm looking at finding a book, generally just I just have it for a raw copy. So a decent price for a high grade copy of this book would be somewhere about a hundred to hundred and twenty five dollars, something like that. Anything beyond below that is just gravy. What this can help us do is when we're looking through the listings on eBay, we can just immediately not even take a look at books that are going for more than you know 140 bucks or something like that. We won't even look at those listings. Because first of all, when you do find a book that looks absolutely perfect on eBay or wherever, you can assume that it's just going to be a cap. Always assume it's going to be a cap of 9.4. And never, ever think you're ever going to get a 9.8 or 9.6 out of a raw copy on eBay. Most people are slabbing those, and so they're just going to be rare to find. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It's not impossible. But when I'm looking at prices, I'm looking at 9.2s, 9.4s. If I think a book looks like a 9.6 or 8, I'm assuming it's going to be a 9.2, so I err on the side of caution when I'm buying books. So whatever grade you're looking for, say you're looking for an 8.0, well, you should only be paying 6.5 or 7.0 prices halved. So let's say I'm looking for an 8.0. I'll go down here to 6.5, and I know I should probably be paying like 55, 60 bucks for that book. So we'll go ahead and switch over to eBay here. I'm going to go ahead and type in that book. The reason I'm picking this one is because it's a highly sought after book, so there's going to be a lot of listings for it. I've got 472 results. And as we find books, we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save them in tabs. We'll list them here and then we'll kind of ballpark some grades, come up with what we think the potential grade might be if we were to press it, like if there's some obvious pressable defects. Then we'll put down what we expect what it costs right now and what we expect. Well, let's just put down what it costs right now, first of all. If it's a bidding thing, we'll just go ahead and put that number down. Um, we'll put the current value based on Go Collect, and then the possible value after a press. And this will give us the data we need to make an informed decision on this. So this spreadsheet I have here on the right-hand side of your screen, I created this. You can get a copy of this. Just go to the video in the description. It'll explain where to get this and all that good stuff. It's free. I'm not, not charging for this. 
Um, something I created for my own use, and I'm just sharing it uh, to make your guys' life a little bit easier. So let's just start going through them. So we'll just move down here. We got one here. Um, it says very good condition. We're looking for mid high grade. So we're looking for like 8.0 plus. They put very good, so I'm probably not even going to pull that one up. Um, this one says for Symbio newsstand copy. It doesn't give anything about the condition. You know, um, and also it's 129. It's a buy it now. Um, we, I probably would go ahead and look at that. Um, so I'm just going to pull, go ahead and, and save it. Um, here's one. Doesn't say anything about condition, but it looks like it could be worth looking at. That's slab. We don't want to look at that. Let me expand this here for you. This one's 59. It's still being bid on. We can look at that one. You know, I can tell just by looking at the picture, this is not a high grade copy. And if they're asking 150, that's, we know that's way above our price range, right? We knew we were setting like 140 is like our cap here. So I'm not even going to bother pulling that one up. This one's at 73. We can pull that one up. 149, we won't pull that one up. This one's signed. I avoid signed because we don't, if CGC didn't watch somebody sign it, it's basically just defacing a book. We can't ever trust the signature. So we never want to buy, at least I don't ever buy a signed copy. Now, I might have a raw copy that is signed that I'm never going to slab. Like, I would just take a reader's copy down to a convention and get it signed just for my own personal use and enjoyment. But unless CGC is witnessing a signature, I don't bother with that, just as a little tip there. This one's 79. This might be worth looking at. Lots of newsstands today. They're pretty rare, so that's kind of weird. Here's a good candidate. And this one price is too high. This one has some potential. It says very fine near mint. Only 108 right now. You know, if it's 108 right now, it's probably going to go for more than that. And sometimes you'll get through this and you'll realize that kind of market prices are different than Go Collect. And you just have to kind of calibrate like, okay, well, Go Collect's based on three months ago. Prices have gone up. You know, whatever. But we're just going to assume right now that we're going to stick to our guns on that. Because there are deals out there. There's books out there flying under the radar all the time that you could pick up. I get them, I get great deals all the time. We're not getting as many here as I had hoped, unfortunately. Okay, let's go ahead and go through this. And we have, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven copies here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll just um, go through each one. And this will help us remember. We'll just put what the price currently is on them. Okay, that's what the current price is right now. Some of these are auctions, some of these are buy it nows. So we'll what we'll do here is we'll go through each one one by one. Okay, so when we're gonna ballpark a grade, what I always do, first of all, just as a tip here, is I go up to my settings and I set it for 200 percent on zoom. It depends on your computer, but for mine, I have like a 30-inch monitor. I set it for 200%. The reason I do that is when you hover over the book, it blows up the copy so you can really see details a lot better. And so this is what we're doing here. So this says lower grade copy. I didn't see that before. And we know we're not going to pay that much. But let's go ahead and look at it anyway. So we can see there's color breaking creases. You know, this looks like, you know, something like a maybe a 4.5 copy or something like that. But we're not really trying to grade mid or lower grade, but we'll, I mean, can't hurt, right? So let's say we were looking for a lower grade copy. When CGC grades or any grading company grades, whether it be even overstreet, there's like caps you can have on a grade based on damage. So a big piece missing like this is going to cap your grade. So I also created a chart for that. And we'll go ahead and pull that up here for you. Okay, so here's our chart right here. So what I've done is I've, if you want to you know, screenshot this or whatever, come back to this video when you need to see this. Um, I've gone through every single resource I could find online and I've kind of put the caps on what is allowable at every different grade. So for example, 9.0, our max defect is a minor defect. Of course, that's all subjective and relative, but you know, like a tear, like a moderate defect would be a tear, you know, a tiny tear. Um, and a minor tear is actually allowed, but it's got to be minor. Moderate would be like a half inch, as you can see here. But anyways, 
That's this is just the language that is used by Overstreet and other places. So I went ahead and included a max defect level. So in your head, you can kind of be thinking, you got to learn what a minor and a moderate and a major defect looks like. So that's kind of what this is, is kind of a teaching tool. So when you're grading books, you can kind of be on the same page because, you know, when CGC notes come back, sometimes they use terminology like moderate, minor, major, whatever. Okay, so then I creases is another thing that a grader will look for. So what's the maximum color breaking crease that's allowed on a book? 1 16th on a 9.6, all the way down to full cover length creases on both covers. You can have that, but that's going to cap you out at a 5.0. So if you have a fold over crease, you know, they used to ship books like that way back in the day, right? So you get these color breaking creases on both the front and back cover. Well, what's the cap grade? Well, now you know, it's a 5.0. You can never get higher than, if everything else is perfect on the book, if it has that, 5.0 is your cap. And that's what's great about this little chart I've made right here. What about tears? That's another defect, you know? What's the max grade you can have with any amount of tear? This is something you need to know. Well, it's a 9.2. If you have a quarter inch tear, but this is the cap you can have based on guidelines. So we have to have a starting point, right? And so a 9.0 can have a quarter inch cover or a one inch interior tear, you know? So interiors count less against you than something that affects the presentation of the book. That's good to know, right? All the way down to you can have greater than a four inch tear on a 2.5. Well, let's say, let's say you have a five inch tear in a book on a cover. Well, now you know, you you can't get higher than a 2.5 with a five inch tear in a book. Tears are something you definitely want to try and avoid unless you're getting like an ultra low grade high end book or something. I would just always avoid any obvious tears being on a book. It just kills the value of a book. Stains and moisture counts. You know, if mo there's like a moisture spot, like on this one, it looks like there's a little moisture maybe possibly on that. What's the max grade you can have with any amount of stains or moisture damage. Well, it's a 9.0 and it has to be like the quarter of a size of a penny all the way down to full cover stains on a 3.0. So if you get a book in that has like a quarter of the cover stained, what's your max grade? Well, it's here it is. It's a 5.0. Not to get off topic here. This is kind of on topic. I kind of took some notes watching videos on what CGC standards were actually guys talking from CGC are talking. So when you have high and mid grades, and I did a video on grading high grade comics. So what they've said basically is for higher grade books, you use more of a subtractive or deductive method. So basically you're starting every book with a 9.8 and every time you find a couple flaws, you deduct a grade, you know, based on kind of these criteria as well. So, you know, you see a couple color breaking spine ticks, you're going to go down a grade. You see, you know, a little bend or whatever, you got to kind of subtract in your head. And that's just the way you do a high grade book. And also for some higher mid grade books as well. But once you get to lower mid grade and lower grade books, it's they say it's more of an art when you're grading. So you eyeball a book and this just looks like a 3.0 and then you just look at the defects and the maximums here and then you kind of adjust accordingly based on that. So if you got a book that, man, this looks like a 4.0 but then you realize it has a three and a half inch tear, well, you know you have to go down to a 3.0. Boom, they've got a 3.0 book, right? Getting back to what we're doing here, so what you really do is you kind of, for mid and lower grades especially, is you're kind of just looking to eyeball a book and say this looks like a book based on my experience and then you kind of just fudge it one way or the other based on these criteria here that I've got on this chart. But for this book, we're mainly concerned with higher mid grade or lower high grade, whichever way you want to put it, and high grade books. So we don't really run into, you know, stains and all that kind of stuff. But it's something to keep in mind. If you see a book that looks perfect, but then you see a little tear or a little stain or whatever, you need to refer to this chart to see what your max because you could think you're buying a 9.2 or 9.4, but it's got this one inch tear or whatever on the interior it's two or three inch tears or three three inch tears in the interior and you got to go like uh-oh i'm buying what i i'm paying 9.2 prices or whatever 8.0 prices but i'm getting a 3.5 book that's not something you ever want to do if you can avoid it okay so getting back to the books here um, we can go ahead and see this is a low grade book so i'm going to go ahead and just eliminate this one so the next book we have here is the 2751 and usually what I'll just do immediately when I look at a book is I'll glance at corners. Okay, those aren't too bad. And I'll glance at the spine. 
Okay, not too bad, right? We're not seeing any obvious big ticks or anything there. We're not seeing any obvious rips, tears, anything. So this looks like it could be a good candidate for a book we might want to think about going after. So let's go ahead and just do our ballpark grade on it. So corners are fairly sharp. If you look kind of up at the top above limited right there, that could be a little edge damage that's hard to see. So that's something we'll want to think about going forward if we get another angle on this. Uh, spine top and bottom looks decent. So this looks like it could be just eyeballing it. A 9.2 or 9.4 plus candidate. I don't see anything else wrong with this book so far. So we'll look at more of the close-ups here. Bottom of the spine looks good. Still not seeing anything to detract from that initial grade. There's just a minute little color breaking tick right there. I can see potential next to that little swoosh or whatever. So what I do is I just go through all the photos that they supply here and I just make sure, um, yeah, that corner looks pretty sharp. I'm not seeing that damage. Of course, I don't know if I'm far enough to the left to see that. Where was that at again? It's on the T Unlimited. So I wanna try and find that here. Whoops, where am I here? Okay, I think I'm a little bit too far to the right. And the way he took this picture, he or she, kind of worries me because while we could have taken a little further to the left here and done the same, got the corner. So is he trying to hide that thing over the T? So this is things you have to think about. When people take pictures, they're trying to put their, I'm not saying everybody does this, but some people are putting their best foot forward on their books and they're trying to hide defects so they get the best price possible. And by the way, if you're selling books, do not do this. You do not want angry people putting bad reviews. Back of this book looks really good. Let's see if we can get another angle on that spot. Sometimes you can see it from the back. That would be over here on the left side. I'm not seeing it here. Not seeing it here. Interior looks good. This looks like white pages. Okay, so this is definitely a high-grade book, I would think. It's a good candidate for it. If that did turn out to be a little ding there on the top, that's probably going to only take us down one grade. I'm already not starting at a 9.8 when I'm buying a book online. So I would think this is a really strong chance of being a 9.4 better. A really strong chance. So what did I want to pay for a 9 point, a max of 125, 140 if it looks like just an exceptional book? The only thing going against this book is that potential flaw up at the top. Now, what you can do is you can email the person selling this book and get a better photo of that and say, you know, I, it looks like there could be something that, just say, can I get a better picture of the top edge above limited? It looks like there might be a ding there. And most people will answer you immediately and, and do that for you. But looking at this guy's feedback, he's a 1286. He's got a hundred percent positive feedback. So I, that kind of, kind of rating there, I would think maybe he's not trying to hide anything here. And uh, maybe in the description, it'll talk about something like that. Make sure you read through the descriptions as well. It says, I don't know much about grading comics, so I took a lot of pics. Book looks great. Doesn't give any information otherwise. So this is definitely a guy you could, um, you could email. I'm not email, but mail within the system of eBay here and ask him about that. That would be the only thing I would look out for there. So knowing that, I would think I would want to bid somewhere around, you know, 125 range. So what I would do is I would um, add to watch list, you know, set an alarm on my phone for like five minutes from when the auction's going to be done. And then when it's like literally three to four seconds left in the auction, bid my 130.50. You know, maybe some other people are thinking the same thing you are and they're going to bid 125 or 130. So if some if I'm thinking this way, maybe somebody else is. So I want to kind of beat those people. So that's why I, I recommend going like 13150, 13167, something like that. Let somebody else build the one uh, bid the 125 or 130 while you for an extra dollar win the auction, right? So this is definitely one I would watch list here if I was looking for this book in a high grade. So um, this is the 2750 current value. Yeah, we need to go back to our thing here. So we think this is a potential 9.4. So we think this is probably something like 270. You know, after press, we're expecting, no. we never want to expect higher than 9.4. Um, so we're just going to put that in there. 
Uh, we think the current grade is probably about 9.4 and the potential grade is probably 9.4. We didn't see any pressable defects, so I'm not going to mess with that. Okay, so once we enter in the details, we looked at if we got it for this price, we could probably flip this book and make a $100 profit, or we could submit it to CGC and make a $173 profit. So once I watch list something, I go ahead, after I've set my alarm or whatever I'm doing, I go ahead and do that. So then we go to the next book. And this video is getting a little longer than I anticipated, so we'll only go through about two or three books here. What we're looking at here is the $59 one. And so let's go ahead and open this up. And first of all, he has in a bag and board right now. And I'm very wary about ever bidding on a book that he's not showing it outside, you know, the bag and board. If I, but what you can do is you can still kind of glance it over. It's like, okay, it's definitely got some damage here on the spine. I'm immediately thinking this is an 8.5 book or less, which is still higher grade, right? So it's not completely out of the realm of possibility, but what I would do is I would email this guy. Now, first of all, let's see, $59, does that seem reasonable for an 8.0? Because we're going to have to assume this is actually a 7.5, right? Because we're expecting it looks like an 8.5 at first, first glance potential. Let's just figure it's a 7.5. What's a 7.5 worth? 150 bucks. So we probably don't want to pay more than 75, 80 bucks, right, for this book. And the bidding is already 59. Is it even worth messaging this guy to get him to take it out of the bag and board for you? Probably not. I probably would just not even bother with this book because if it's already at $59 with three days left, this book's going to go for 100 bucks, maybe even 105 There's enough interested parties. There's 26 watchers. I mean, you could still do it. I mean, if you want to add it to your watch list and just take a gamble on it without, but I wouldn't be questioning somebody when you, you know, when you're pretty sure there's a very low chance. So when a book is in a bag and board and I'm really not sure and the pictures aren't great, what I'll typically do is I'll lowball. And if, if 75 is my cap, I probably would be like, okay, I'm going to bid $71.50. Add it to your watch list. Bid $71.50. If you don't get it, who cares, right? It's a higher grade copy, but I, there's plenty of fish in the sea. There's lots of books out there, right? What we can go ahead and do here, though, is, is use our handy dandy spreadsheet here and put, we think it's a 7.5. Potential grade, maybe 8.0, you know. Current value for that, what did we say it was? Man, my memory. Uh, 150 or 170. So we'll go current value 150, 170 potential. So as you can see, even at that price, actually I, I got to back up there a little bit here in a minute. Um, I, I really messed up here, um, but that's okay. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. So the last book we had the current cost, obviously we're never getting this book at 2750. So let's say we did get it at our 130, 150 that we, the max we want to pay, right? Okay, this is a little bit more reasonable. We're Basically breaking even if we were to flip it, and we would make about a $70 profit at that cost. Now, your willingness to pay whatever you want to pay is up to you, but I would never buy a book if this was at least not within a 20 bucks to the good because it's just not worth it. It's better to go ahead and just buy a, a known quantity, a slab copy, and just pay the dollar amount, pay the 270 rather than, you know, pay the 131, or let's say we're paying 100 and, what's $40, $170 for this. Then you got to pay your $25 or whatever plus shipping to CGC. You got to pay to have it pressed and cleaned. You got to wait eight months to get the book back, you know, and by that time, you know, what's going on with the market <laughs> at that point. So my threshold on this, if I was buying a copy personally and I wasn't going to try and make money off of it, I would never pay more than 150 for this book. It's just not worth it at that point. So this one here, we said we wanted to pay no more than, what was it, 7150 if we were going to take a chance on it. Well, there you go. It's just barely within the realm of what we would want to buy it for. I would never pay this. You know, I think, and you can just play with this like, okay. If you were buying it just for yourself, you would never want to pay more than $90 for this particular book right here. 
it's just not a good value. Um, the only advantage is you get the book quicker. You know, you don't have to wait on CGC. And if you're looking to just keep a book raw and you're not even going to be slabbing it anyway, like maybe you just want to read this occasionally and it's low enough quality that you don't mind, you know, risking doing a little more damage to it, by all means, you know, this is a good methodology and, you know, at least you can kind of gauge by this whether you're getting a good value or not. Okay, so sorry about that. I, I foobarred on that one uh, when I did the initial um, presentation of it here on the, on the spreadsheet. So now that we got that, we either watch listed, don't watch listed, we moved to the last book. So we'll just do one more here. Let's ballpark a grade here as well. Um, so we're looking at the corners, they look pretty good. Spine looks pretty good. Yeah, this is higher grade than I expected it to look at, uh, look like. That top looks dinged up a little bit, similar to the last one. So just right off the bat, I would think this would be like a cap of 9.2. Just because we're not seeing any damage doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah, we definitely have some dings. That's going to hurt it there at the top. I, I think that's going to cap our book at 9.2. Just immediately seeing that. That's that's my kind of take on this, even though the spine looks really good. We can just go back to our handy-dandy sheet here. Take a look again. So we have these dings at the top. Uh, we'll say, what are we going to call that? We'll call it tiny tears, I guess is what we'll call that. Maybe even call it creases, kind of somewhere in the middle. So I would say it's somewhere in the quarter inch range. So that's where kind of, I'm thinking they'll just kind of cap that at 9.2. So if the book is perfect in every other way, I would say like 9.2. If we think that, we probably think this should be like an 8.0 book max. So that's kind of where we get our pricing from, was that old 8.0? If you remember 8.0, looks like... You know, 170, so that's where we're getting that, you know. And actually, this book here, okay, so two grades down from 9.2, but 8.5. So 190, yeah, one, I think 120, what were we, 130, 150 on the other one? I think I would go a little lower. I would go like cap of 120, 150 or 116, 50, something like that. You know, just fudge down a little bit just because of that obvious damage on top that we don't have so obvious on the other book. And we'll just glance it over and see if we have a full cover here. The back can tell you a lot. There's a little bit of something there going on there at the top. I'm not sure what that is. There's some potential staining on this book. And there's some, it uh, looks like maybe some pressable creases there. I'd be worried about this little bit of staining here. So that would probably downgrade our book. So let's look at staining. I mean, what, what does staining do to our book? Um, looks like like half a penny of staining. So that's probably capping us here at the 8.5 to 8.0 range. So I would think we're capped at 8.0 with this book, which means we might probably need to be looking at this as a 7.0 book, right? So once again, we're able to fudge back down, you know. Uh, so it's similar to that other book. We probably wouldn't want to pay more than $75 for this book. So it's already priced as $73 here. So I would probably just move on from this book. You know, other people are bidding on it. Let them bid on it. Let them have their stained, ripped book, right? <laughs> well, we're trying to find a better copy of this. We're trying to find good value, and this just is not a good value. I know this book is going to go for probably 90 or 100 bucks, maybe even more. And it's just because this is a high-demand book, people can get that. But we can do better than this. We can get a good value book. We've already kind of seen that, right? So I would just, I wouldn't even bother just entering this on my sheet. I would just immediately X this out. And that's kind of what I do is I pull up every book possible that's available and I just weed them down to like four or five books. And then I kind of grind out, you know, what I think the grade and the value is on those four or five books. And then maybe I get one or two that I'm going to place a bit on. Let's say I spend a day and I look at 200 different books. I'm probably only bidding on 10 of those, maybe 15. So be stingy. There's plenty of books, unless you're looking at Silver Age stuff, something from the 60s, you can be picky. There's thousands of these books out there. There's tens of thousands of this book still in the wild. If you don't find it this month, check next month. If you don't find it that month, be patient. You know, we don't need to be in a rush to find books 
we're going to always have several books in our collection we can be looking for. So if you've got 100 books you're looking for in your collection, and every month you're looking for one of those 100 books, yeah, maybe you'll find five or 10 of those books this month. Maybe you'll find two of them next month. Maybe you'll get lucky one month and find 25. And, it'll, you know, over a year and a half, maybe you'll find all those 100 books you're looking for. Of course, this all depends on your budget and all that stuff, but that's for you to decide and uh, figure out for yourself. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful on improving your process for how you're choosing which books to bid on on eBay, which books you're looking to buy, and of course, how to ballpark grades online, which is the main focus of this video. Hope this chart helps you figure that out. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to put them below. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, yeah, and in, you'd like to subscribe, I really would appreciate it. So don't forget to have fun while you're out there collecting, and we'll see you in the next video.